Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a great lunch. Um, we are coming back to the second session after lunch on turning forest innovation into practice. Now the session is pretty much directed towards you, uh, whatever you want to make out of it. And there are no expectations, which will make it super interesting. So before we begin, I would like to make a very short um, energizer to basically tune us all in into a little bit of the process. So I'd like to make two proposals. The first one is what we're going to do now. Um, I would like to do what we were trying to do a little bit in the morning, which is count to 10, and if we are able, count to 20, without repeating ourselves. So I'm going to unspotlight myself, um, maybe see gallery view. Um, I would like everybody to turn on their videos. Okay, and first of all, I would like you to raise your hand saying that you are here and you're listening well. Thank you very much. Uh, all those of you that still didn't turn on the video, please do. So I would like to start by trying to count. Why are we going to count from one to 10? Not because it's just a game, but because in the next session, <clears throat> we're going to talk about our needs and offers all together. There's tons of needs and offers, and it's going to be a huge chaos unless we learn how to speak together uh, in a group of, now we are 83 people. Um, so we're, we're going to have to be in a way silent, listening, but also intervening. So this needs something like a magical management of silence. And let's see how we can do it, okay? So the challenge now for us is to count from one to 10. Uh, I'm not going to give the rhythm. Uh, you have to speak the number two and three and so on without speaking on top. And if we speak on top of each other, we have to come back to one, okay? So I'm going to say the number one, and then you continue. One. Two. 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 Okay, stop. Five. Let's do it again. Sorry. Let's do it again. One. Two, three, 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 four, four, five. Five. We have to do it again. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Only one person can speak at the same time. So we do it again. One, two, two three, three, four, five. five. Six. Sorry, we have to do it again. <laughs> we have to do it again. Let's do it again. Sorry. Several people spoke at Nine. the same time. So one, two, two three, four, four five. Six, Six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So oh. we're starting to get there. I think there's somebody that is counting from one to ten all by himself. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, now we're going to make the exercise uh, a little bit more interesting. And what I'm going to ask you is that you say a word that you think is what you think is most needed for the forests of Europe, okay? And we are not going to say it again on top of each other. If we say on top of each other, we, we start it again, okay? So I'm going to start. I'm going to say we. Cooperation. All over. Awareness. Recognition. Planning. Reforesting. Leadership. Mindfulness. People. Protecting. Operation. Operation. Territories. Possibilities. Climate positive. Resilience. Circular. Digitalization. Adaptation. <laughs> Open Stop access. Illegal. Future. Our children. Value Solidarity. Change. Higher acknowledgement of regulatory <laughs> ecosystem services. New regulations. Else. Business opportunities. 
citizens. Okay. Thank you very much. You see, this is already the power of uh, cooperation, of doing it together. So thank you so much for building this story together already. It just needs a little bit of training, no? Yeah. To work together. So thank you very much for this moment. Now, I would like to share with you my screen. Uh, I would like to ask my colleagues to share also the link to the needs and offers um, that I'm going to share on my screen. Basically, uh, almost all of you have already seen it. You've received it by email. Uh, you've edited. And I'm going to zoom out so just to, to see the amount of needs and offers that we have here. You see? It's immense. So EIP Agri, it's about innovation, not only in forestry, but also in processes. So as you see, we're also trying to innovate by creating here different ways of interaction. You muted yourself, Andre. Also, I was speaking a lot. <laughs> so, sorry, everybody. What I was saying is that we have a lot of needs and offers. Um, being innovative is not only about being innovative in forests, but the IP also tries to innovate in processes. So every time we organize an online seminar, we always try as well to try new innovative methods and approaches to stimulate us into different ways of working together. And this is one. So we're testing it out now with all this number of people. And as you see, it's already becoming interesting. So it's um, the needs and the offers are here. Uh, we have a lot of them on the left, needs, and we have offers on the middle. The matches are on the right, but they're a little bit hard to do the match because there are so many matches and connections. And if we go down, we have a lot of needs and offers. So this is amazing. Uh, it already reflects the movement, the motion, the initiative, uh, and the trigger that is inside all of you. So now what we would like is to listen uh, to some of them, okay? We could do it in the same way as we did before, but let's try uh, to ask Willemin. Willemin and Leary are two colleagues of the IP. Uh, who have been reading these needs and offers. And I would like maybe to ask Willemin uh, to select uh, and to give us a suggestion on a couple of needs or one need that you would find relevant for us to listen to here now in plenary. Willemin, do you have any suggestion? Um, yeah, actually I have several, um, as you can imagine, <laughs> with this number of needs. There are, they vary from, uh, quite different levels. There are some very specific, and there are some which are uh, sort of at a more policy, more general level. Um, for the, I think it might be interesting to, to have one of both. Would you agree, Andre? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, then let me see. There is one dealing with um, climate change specifically, also saying something about uh, the need to find ways to deal with softer soils, because in Finland, in the north, the thaws come earlier. So, uh, and I felt this is quite a very, it's a really specific one, which... Okay, I'm so not, you, not sure where it was, but I know it was uh, Gunilla who had it um, that posted it. Don't worry. Maybe maybe it's easier if uh, you just give us one or two highlights, and then we ask the crowds and the participants that are here to tell us some of them themselves. That would be you want a to share idea another indeed. one. Yeah. Um, right, yes, I did want to share another one. There was another, ah, yes, I found, yes, the need is there, the appropriate wood harvesting technology. And uh, then I was also, there was one on cooperation at different levels and support at different levels for um, forest owners. Let me see. Yep, 
political and economic support for the holistic forest management to mitigate climate change. So, so this is really about the different levels that need to be involved and need to work together. What Gerhard said earlier about the top down and bottom up cooperating. So I felt this was a, another interesting one. And of course, I do not do justice to this full range that we have here. So. Okay, okay, okay. So thank you very much, Willemann. Let's hear maybe from Liri two offers that you find relevant for us to listen, and then we will give the space for uh, some people to share some of their needs and offers. Liri. Yeah. Uh, yes, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, offers, but um, uh, I would uh, introduce democratization of forest data. It seems to have also a lot of uh, matches that Katam gives everyone the possibility to measure forest accurate with higher precision than traditional inventory using uh, different um, IT technology. And um, there were a lot of uh, proposals for cooperation for participation, participation in workshops uh, uh, to write uh, different projects, but uh, one offer that um, I would um, highlight is a collaboration in profit-related innovative project. Okay, thank you very much, Liri. So, <clears throat> as you've all seen, generating financial in innovative technology based on natural resources from forest from Latvia. Okay. Um, Maybe Andrea can still add that there are some which are offers and needs combined as well. So that's noteworthy. <laughs> okay. So you know by now that you have the link for this needs and offers uh, Padlet map on the chat. You can continue to add it uh, now and later on. Um, I think we have a little bit of time to listen to some of these needs and offers that you would like to voice yourself uh, and maybe explain a little bit better but shortly, so a little bit like we were doing with the words, uh, I think uh, we have time to listen to some, some of the needs and offers. It's also important to say that um, those of you that did not put the names on your needs and offers, there is a couple, uh, please uh, re revise them. For example, we see here offer one, social innovation development pathways. It doesn't have a name. So, so some of you did not put the name and the email. So please do that so that for the future you can be contacted uh, either in needs or offers, okay? So I'm going to uh, ask you now, actually I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to ask because I think all of you know your needs and offers and you have the Padlet link yourselves. So I'm going to ask you to share some of needs. Does anybody like to share a need? Yep. <laughs> I I have uh, a need. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I would like I would like ideas uh, to bring digit digitization to uh, small forest owners and also small and medium companies. It's something I am working on on that. That's not easy. Okay. Can you say your name? Yeah, I am David uh, Garcia from Agresta, Spain. Okay, thank you, David. Another person. Yes, uh, Lars Willemsson, Skogforsk, Sweden. Uh, I think it is important to, to really understand that uh, doing forestry is, if you calculate on all the different effects, much better for the climate than not doing it. Just storing carbon in, in the uh, forest will mean that you, you reach a climax uh, and then you reach nothing more. It starts to deteriorate instead. Uh, and this is uh, quite, uh, <laughs> quite well shown when you get uh, bark beetles and uh, you get uh, draft problems and things like that. It's commonly more in older forests 
than in the more growing ones. So I think that's a very important issue. And of course, it includes the um, substitution of fossil fuels and fossil uh, materials. Okay, so that is a specific need you have, or it's a need for the forest, but the request I, here is to share specific needs that you have. I think it's a specific need for the entire society to understand this. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think it's based on scientific evidence. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Lars. Um, I would like to. Would like to share it? Andreas. I would love to. Yeah, my name is Andreas Nikolaus Kleinschmidt von Lengefeld, and I would like, when I listen to all the experts here and all the great uh, discussion we have, I think we really need on the European level, and it doesn't matter how this will be set up, a multidisciplinary team of experts that co can coordinate with all of us, all the different needs and connect the different regions, the local specific uh, framework conditions under which we find forest ecosystems today to exchange among us and with the different experts, including coming from the ICT world, but also from social sciences and others to, to support and accompany to find the right solutions for the adaptation to climate change, but also including aspects of soil fertility, biodiversity, uh, roundwood production, leisure activities, the rural development, all the complexities we're in. Okay, thank you very much. One more, one more need, and then we want to listen to some offers, and then we can come back to some needs. One more. Hi, need. this is Lucia. I need partners to create a data space related to forestry at the European and global level. Very good. Uh, is there any, any, any uh, <laughs> many people that would like to share a need now? Can you raise your hand so that I see? Hi. Okay, go ahead. Yes, as I wrote, uh, I needed I needed to find uh, initiative already done on uh, forest education for school uh, to improve uh, participation of young people to the project on forestry in Europe. Okay, thank you, Marcella. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now let's listen to some uh, offers. Who would like to offer something? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of offers. There's a raise hand, Andre. Please speak, Eugenia. Yeah, hello. So we are searching for a partnership in generating financial profit in innovative technology based on natural resources from forests. So it means coniferous greener waste. Um, manufacturing and selling bio and bio-related products, we already have one um, using a unique patented technology. Uh, it is our own already patented technology, thick pine needle extract for population. And the extract is already used in our market in Latvia and in Lithuania. So we want to spread it uh, all over the Europe. Um, and it can be used not only in biopharmaceutical uh, sector, but uh, as well as uh, in veterinary. We already made a research for the veterinary se sector, and we can advise the final product. So in uh, this field as well. So maybe some somebody uh, will be interested in such a project. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Stefania. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, good morning to everybody. Good afternoon. Sorry, this morning I was not with you. Um, uh, so I jump <laughs> like this uh, in the meeting. I'm Stefania Petrosillo, and uh, Europark is the Federation of uh, Nature Protected Areas. So national parks, regional parks, Natura 2000 sites, etc. So uh, what we can offer is, first of all, the experience of our management bodies uh, in uh, managing forest in protected areas and in Natura 2000 sites. So a lot of experience of this uh, uh, sort of um, different situations and in all Europe. And then we have a specific project called Red Bosques 
about the management of uh, um, old forest in Mediterranean countries. And when I will understand how to <laughs> write in the dashboard, I will do. And another project that is now uh, we are implementing is Natura Adapt, is how to include uh, the, change, the climate change in the management plans or protect areas. And of course, they are working a lot also about forest management. So I will provide the links and the contact uh, about this um, project that we are implementing as a result. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefania. You can put it on the, on the needs, on the link. I don't know if it's already there and people can see it after. Thank you very much. In the offers, so, I think. Yes, needs and offers, okay. yes, exactly. So let's hear from uh, Lars, Lars. Yes, uh, I announced it uh, on, uh, on the board. But uh, it's, uh, let's see, now you hear me? Um, uh, I announced it on the board and it's uh, about school for skills and possibilities. We're in the middle of uh, forestry research in general. It's from uh, uh, genetic uh, resources, breeding of uh, forest uh, material to uh, value chain optimization at the other end of the cycle. And uh, we are also doing uh, LCA and the analysis of uh, the importance of different uh, factors when we look at climate change. We have biodiversity experts as well. And uh, we are very closely connected to the Swedish forestry. So that means that uh, if you would like to have a, a body like that in the cooperation, we are happy to hear from you. Thank you very much, Lars. Let's hear from Andreas. Yes, thank you. So what I said earlier, we have developed last year with two experts. One is actually also today with us, Silvio Schuler and Raffaele Cavalli from the University of Padua. A small study, I would call it, for the European Sawmill Organization, but it's actually, it has been carried out for them due to the current crisis we're facing with bark beetles to find a way how we could coordinate that and set up what we would call a real-time European forest monitoring system. So it's, it's an idea, it's taking uh, into consideration all the initiatives and all the work that has been carried out with FISA, with Copernicus, uh, but also on the national regional level, what you have the call out also to have a data space for forestry that we could, so to say, connect the actors in, in future to, to have direct access to a huge knowledge hub and expertise. And I can try to, to send you the, the report, which is public, you can read it. And we want to continue this discussion to see we have so much knowledge and we have so many tools at hand that we can strengthen and set up of what we call a vibrant network for forest related issues in Europe uh, to include all the stakeholders and actors. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andreas. Um, before before uh, we continue, I would like just to explain to those of you that uh, don't know how to use this Padlet, because I think there are some people uh, asking how to do it. Very quickly, I'm just going to share my screen again, uh, very quickly. So on the top, uh, on the top, no, on the bottom right, there is a little uh, red circle with a plus or a pen if you hover your mouse over it. And then you click on it and it, there's a pop-up box that comes in and then you can put your title uh, of uh, the offer. First you should write offer or need, uh, then the title, and then below you, you can describe it. You can add a link if you want, and then you should put your name on it, okay? Just uh, for you to know and um, and other participants to continue in the future. So now I would like just to listen to a couple more people, let's say, because otherwise we'll be here the whole afternoon. So now it's your turn. Sorry, I don't know your first name, uh, Venter, Mr. Venter, I don't know, it's your floor. Hello, Antonio, yeah, thank you, Tony. Okay, very briefly, and uh, no, just we, we offer, like uh, I said in the post, uh, our uh, availability, of uh, your our network, the Mediterranean Modern Forest Network, since uh, 1992 works about uh, the participatory process, process in forest management around the world. And uh, specifically, we work with the Mediterranean area. And so uh, the, the, most, uh, the most important pillars are the, 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 the sharing of knowledge, and in our network, we have uh, research institution and the university and so on. 
but all the stakeholders who who works in the in the forest in a vision of uh, uh, of a future. So in a multifunctionality role of uh, roles of the forest, and so we are uh, we are <laughs> available to to support uh, this kind of process uh, everywhere in the Mediterranean area. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Antonio. Thank you. You can maybe rename your name to so that everybody knows. So now, Fabio Boscaleri, it's your turn. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Very good. Okay. Now my offer is a small box in the in the in the list of offers. Um, what we have been doing since 2014 is uh, trying to create a, a brokerage moment at European level through the uh, workshop that we initiated as a innovation, a forest innovation workshop. We already organized four editions. Tomorrow I have a small slot to, to present it. But as I see that there are there is an interest in, in having a broad platform at European level for having a sort of permanent network, uh, my offer is mainly for organizations at national or, or European level that would like to organize this with, with us. Uh, normally it's biannual and next year we will we are we would like to organize the fourth edition of this uh, 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 event. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much Fabio. We'll be curious to see. So now Almudena, it's your turn. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you much. Um, I apologize because uh, today working at home, uh, I have a, a kind of um, you know limited uh, resources to to enable a uh, camera and perhaps uh, voice is a little bit unstable. Let's see. So what we offer is uh, our te technological expertise and our uh, network with stakeholders to exploit data from satellites, from Earth observation and other remote sensing platforms to support a monitoring of the a forest and uh, not only vitality of the forest, but also the biodiversity so that we can uh, still innovate and work together, mitigate the effort the effects of climate change and working for sustainable development goals. So our project Sustainable Forest is, is there highlighted and uh, will be uh, really keen to continue work on, on this roadmap. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Almudena. Now last chairing, Benjamin, you still have the floor. It's your turn. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes, um, well, it's not really a, an offer, it's more, um, uh, an opportunity and to remind you that there's a, a topic actually right now um, uh, on um, in the horizon Europe about uh, the governance and um, the uh, creation of a network uh, regarding the all uh, personal groups and uh, I think that we are uh, like a, a couple of, uh, of partners who are interested in, in this topic so maybe we could uh, talk about it and uh, and think about uh, a network, um, a thematic network on this on this topic. Okay, great. So you're already giving us the um, the motto for the next session of uh, the open space, actually, which is exactly what we want: is to explore topics together. So thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Remember that um, until the end of tomorrow, you can still post your needs and offers in that uh, link. Uh, and in the end of the event, this will be exported into a PDF that then will be available to all of you, okay? So now I would like to ask our host to share the screen with the presentation of the open space again, just to remember us all how we are going to discuss uh, and create an agenda. So we are now uh, in this moment after lunch where we are going to have uh, 20 rooms available to discuss on whatever we want for how long we want with the people that want, okay? So how are we going to do this? It's the next step, ne next slide, uh, especially for those that arrived after lunch. Um, we are going to have this, uh, another Padlet link, uh, like the one of needs and offers uh, that we will share um, now exactly. It's already on the chat. Uh, in this Padlet link, we have 20 rooms. The last room is the coffee hall. So if you don't know where to go, you can go to the coffee hall. But what we want to begin with is to know what you want to discuss 
now. So we're going basically to create the space for you to write uh, what uh, you want to discuss and then present it here in plenary, just like you did now with the needs and offers. So basically propose a meeting uh, and we will do this until we fill uh, most of the rooms. Um, and then we give a moment for people to uh, write their name in a comment uh, to the room that they want to go to. Okay, so next slide, maybe. So um, in the open space, the principle is we're trying to create the space for the most relevant conversations. So replicating coffee breaks and conferences, uh, and you are free to move in between rooms. So what happens is the only thing that could have happened. We don't have a specific expectation, except that you mobilize yourselves to talk in this big theme, which is how can we improve forest management in the next five years, which is the reason why we're all here today, okay? So whoever comes is the right people. So we invite everybody to join the people, that, the meeting that they want to go to. And instead of starting when is the right time, we try to start more or less all at the same time. Uh, and the meetings will finish uh, in one hour. So they last maximum one hour, but they can stop before. Or actually other meetings can occur uh, and start spontaneously during the coffee hall, for example. Maybe you don't know what meeting you want to attend and you go to the coffee hall and there you start with some people talking about something and then you can actually, if there is a free room, go to that room and uh, start talking about that or join another room, you see? So in the next slide, we, we basically show the two kinds of people uh, that normally appear in an open space, which is, or the two kind of main behaviors. One is the butterfly and the other one is the bumblebee. So the butterfly is the person that uh, hovers a little bit, uh, trying to see where they are going to stop. And then they stop in one meeting and they stay there for a long time, okay? The bumblebee is the cross pollinators. So you move from meeting to meeting, basically learning one thing and giving some ideas in one place and then going to the other and bringing some ideas from the other meeting to the to the next, you see? So you, you can be either a bumblebee or a butterfly and it's okay. So in the next slide, I think what we have is in summary, the process. So basically with this link that you have on the chat, first of all, I want you to think of what do you really want to talk about? Um, these slots are not slots of 30 minutes as it's saying there, it's my mistake, sorry. It's uh, meetings of one hour write it, place it in a room, um, and present it in plenary, okay? Or wait, and then you choose the room that you want to go to. So in the next slide, basically we have these steps. Uh, first, present your topic, then sign into your topic of interest, and then we will review the agenda in plenary, okay? So I think now we can stop sharing the screen, and I will share uh, my screen with the open space agenda. So what you're seeing now is this Padlet link. It may be a bit small for all of you, but I will basically zoom in my browser. So you see on top, it says open space agenda. What do you want to discuss and who do you want to meet to improve forest management in five years? Each column is a room. So we will have 20 breakout rooms in the Zoom. It's not going to be as in the morning that you have to follow a different link. Now, what will happen is that we will have different Zoom uh, rooms and you just need to choose which room to go to inside the Zoom, okay? We have a specific slide just to show you how you do this. It's uh, much more simple than what we did in the morning that you had to go out and go into another room. So actually you are all, inside we are still in, all in the same meeting and you can move in between rooms okay very easily so the rooms will be created as soon as we stop creating the agenda and the space will be the rooms will be empty until you enter a specific room okay so now what uh, we invite you to do is to um, take a moment to come to one of these rooms uh, here, not to come to one of these rooms, to come to this link, um, write, copy, paste this link from the chat into your browser. 
And then you come here and you press a plus in one of these rooms. You put the title of the meeting that you would like to discuss, okay? Imagine you want to explore um, maybe an application uh, for, for a funding call on Mediterranean forests, okay? Um, and participatory management, imagine. So you write uh, here, uh, call on, etc. cetera. Um, and then you write your name here, okay? My name is Andre Vizinho. You write this and then you publish, okay? And then it stays here on room number two. And, uh, and then you wait, okay? We, and then you present this on plenary. I give you a, a moment for you to present this on plenary. And after all the rooms have been filled, now you can propose uh, group rooms, group discussions, or you can also propose individual discussions. You can choose the room that you want to go to. The last one, like I said, is free for the coffee hall. So for the people that want to make a break and want just to have a coffee and meet the people in the coffee hall. And um, basically this is it, okay? Then after we have populated the rooms with discussions that we want to have, I give you a little bit of space and time for you to come here and add as a comment that you want to go to this room, okay? So how do you do this? I say, I'm interested, and I put my name and the cuisine, okay? And then you publish, and you have it there. So now I'm going to delete this because this was just an example. I'm going to delete all these examples. And um, basically, uh, the floor will be empty for us to start creating the agenda, okay? Before we start, is there any question? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, this is Adrian from the UK. How many um, uh, applications can you put in? Can you can you do the one application, put, you know, or can you do three different applications on topics to discuss? Well, you can only uh, with you can only be in one place at each time. And the discussions are going to be simultaneously happening yep. at the same time. Okay, so the discussions will start at uh, three thirty-five. Now it's three seven. So in about half an hour, the discussions will start. Or at, no, at three forty. Sorry, at three forty, the, the discussions will start. So um, there's going to be twenty sessions that will happen at the same time. So you cannot propose more than one. Otherwise, you're proposing a discussion that you will not be in. So when you propose a discussion, you are responsible to be in that meeting, okay? And basically to be the host in that meeting. If a lot of people want to be in that meeting, we have some of the facilitators that were available in the morning and they can be there. We can distribute one person for each meeting until the first 10 meetings uh, to help you out, okay? Or to the meetings that have a lot of people. So the answer to your question is you can only propose one, uh, and when you propose, then you cannot go to the others, okay? Unless at a certain point you are in your meeting and you can delegate the hosting to another person and that person continues the meeting and you can go to another one, okay? Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you for that question. Okay, so, and since uh, everything seems to be clear, I'm going to share my screen with um, the open space agenda. And basically I'm going to create silence and just like, like a while ago, uh, you can start. So now we already have one person, uh, Eugenia, um, do you want to present the discussion that you want to have? So Chiara now just proposed in another room. So we'll, I will give the voice and we slowly change. We cannot have two discussions in the same room, okay? but uh, we will organize slowly. So as we are listening to the people uh, presenting now, you can continue to propose meetings in other rooms, okay? So let's start from Eugenia in room number three. Eugenia, do you want to explain the meeting that you want to have? Yes, just in a moment. So we just want to 
<clears throat> to understand what is the attitude towards the use of wood greenery in bioeconomics, because nobody uh, speaks about this theme. And what is the attitude? Sorry, I couldn't understand. What is the attitude? The attitude towards the usage, the use of wood greenery in bioeconomics. Uh, because uh, previously nobody spoke about this theme, um, but now we think that it is a very prospective uh, field of um, so organizing an innovative project. And we have uh, some offers, but we are uh, searching for partners to cooperate with and to, um, to promote and to inform the public uh, about this thing. Okay, thank you very much, Eugenia. I think it was clear. Now let's hear from uh, Kiaren, room number two. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I, I was interested in the, we, we've had EIP projects working here in Ireland for, for several years now, working on uh, sort of in innovation in agriculture and particularly the uh, biodiversity elements of, of agriculture and also the smaller parts of agriculture, such as hill farming, extensive agriculture that uh, don't get so much attention. So what I would like to do is explore using the EIP mechanisms and the experience to date with EIP, how can we use those tools for to animate the creation of new forests. We have a lot of demand now for new forests. And I think that some of the models and some of the things that we have been doing previously for to animate new forest development, those, those systems no longer work. The assumptions that we make no longer apply. And we need to have some new business models and some innovation for to animate uh, interest in creating new forests, particularly with private landowners. Who, who own the land in, in, in question. And I think, okay. sorry, yeah. one last part. I think that the EIP model is about collaboration and it allows us to connect parts of land. It allows us to do new things uh, that we weren't doing previously. So I'm, I'm quite interested in that. Okay. Excuse me, I, I would have a question about the EIP mechanisms you, you mean. It's uh, through a personal group, so at a national or regional level. Or it's uh, through a, a thematic network with the horizon Europe? I, I think it's at different scales. And I think we have, I think at catchment level, I think is one area. And to develop linkages between, rather than having fragmented development of forest, that we have linked forests that have meaning and that have a relevance at, at landscape scale. So I think we're definitely talking about land, landscape level. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So I think it's a, a topic that you can continue in the discussion. So let's hear from room number one, uh, Almudena. Yeah, hello. Yeah, the, the, um, the idea here is to, to tackle challenges for uh, forest stakeholders to, to adopt uh, technological innov innovations or to foster technology. Okay. Um... Uh Hello, I, I lost the connection, so I, I'm not sure. So, sorry about that, uh, Andre. Me too, I disappeared from the meeting. I don't know what happened. Um, I think we all did, and we couldn't hear the last things you said either, Andre. Okay, yes. so basically I was saying that uh, while Almodena was um, coming back uh, and trying to get a good connection, what I was trying to say is that if you don't see in the four rooms that we have now, the, the meetings that you want to go to, then it's your responsibility to propose it, okay? So let's try to make the best use of our time and to doing exactly what we want to do. So let's see uh, if Almudena is already with better sound. Almudena, uh, can you explain it again? Yeah, okay, thank you for, for the opportunity. The, the idea is to address the challenges that uh, forest stakeholders found on uh, adoption technological innovations for their forest management and to 
uh, improve their operations. So perhaps we can tackle enables, so incentives or whatever they can find, and perhaps at the end uh, find out uh, recommendations. So that's the idea. Okay, thank you very much, Almudena. Let's hear from room number four, uh, David Garcia. Yeah, uh, I propose this theme as digitalization of lagging actors in the forestry value chain, because I think there is a big barrier to uh, to uh, help this kind of actor to integrate these new tool, digital tools. We have very good digital tools, but they some a lot of users don't 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 want to use them, or maybe uh, it's difficult to uh, to help them to to use them and to take advantage of these these new digital tools. Okay, thank you very much. Is there, okay, here is another one. Benjamin, room number six. Would you yes. like to speak? Uh, yeah, you can hear me. Um, yes, as I said earlier, um, there's a, a topic, a current topic on the Horizon Europe, and um, it's about uh, creating a thematic network um, with the different operational groups. And uh, I think it would be a good opportunity for us to, uh, to, to, to answer this call or to try to answer this call um, and, um, and, uh, say, uh, and work on different forest issues. Um, so I, I know there are some of uh, partners that, that are interested in. So uh, uh, yeah, we, we could talk about it. Thank you very much, Benjamin. So this is uh, exactly a good moment for these things, exploring project ideas and see maybe it can come up some partnership or some people that we really resonate and have ideas and we would like to continue to work with, um, services, uh, just reflections on uh, structural things for forests and solutions and ideas and debates. So anything is open for whatever you want to discuss. So now the question is, um, there's still a bit of time. Somebody just put one, but forget to put the name. Um, we create a bit of silence. And there's space for you. Room number seven, Carol, would you like to present? Carol, would you like yeah. to present your topic? Yeah, um, I would like to open a room, not as an offer, but as a discussion platform on open, uh, yeah, dealing openly with trade-offs and priority setting for providing different forest ecosystem services. I think this is an important topic because we're talking about multifunctionality, but we cannot provide any type of forest ecosystem service to its optimum at the same time. And I think this is neglected in most of the discussions we had this morning. Okay, thank you very much, Carol. Would anybody like to propose still another discussion? I will keep one minute of silence to see if there's still somebody that is thinking. Hello. So there is another one here. I'm going to move it to room number eight. It's uh, by Adrian. Adrian, would you like to explain it? Yeah, what I'd like to what I'd like to try and find out is more on woodland creation. Um, I generally deal with a lot of um, farmers, which are food producers, which are um, which are going down the opportunities of um, of putting in woodlands into their um, onto their farm businesses, and just looking at the opportunities for uh, to produce that as biochar um, for life, you know, for um, feeding back to livestock to offset uh, carbon um, outputs, or equally for, um, for using in soils, etc., to uh, sequester carbon. Okay, great. 
So thank you all very much. I think we have enough group discussions. If there is one, there's still space for it. Aha, suddenly they start coming up, they're still. So um, let's listen still to room number nine, uh, Flip. Would you like to present it? Um, mainly, I would just like to open the discussion for um, uh, for techniques or best practices that could um, enhance soil buildup at a larger scale, at the forest scale. Great, thank you very much, Philippe. Let's listen to Linda for room number 10. Yes, um, I was just looking for some um, practical examples of alternative forest uses. And I think maybe that was discussed a little bit this morning in the multi, in one of the groups that I wasn't in, but I'm, I'm thinking of, so I'm a forest owner and I'm, I'm thinking of um, anything, uh, forest school, edible forest. I think there was chestnut production, honey, what, whatever people have tried and successfully done, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, so let's listen from uh, the proposal for room number 11. I think Gunilla is your name, Gunilla? Yes, that is my name. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so this may be a bit old school forestry from plant breeding. So how to find proper seed sources for future uses as climate is changing. So we are looking for high growth and also for resilience and adaptability. And this is maybe something here up north when the it's getting warmer and wetter. So it's a question of thinking of which seed sources to use if that stand will be growing for some 70 okay. to 100 years. Thank you very much, Gunilla. So, David, you've raised your hand. Do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, I propose this. Uh, I proposed one theme that is sim uh, similar to Almudena's. So, in room room four, um, uh, I will bring room four to room one to to add this to Almudena's uh, proposition. So, because it's more similar, digitalization and challenge of technological innovation. Okay, Almudena, are you okay with this? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally agree. So we can we can enrich the the uh, the meeting, David. Also, good idea, great. Great. Okay. This is the spirit of the open space. I don't even need to teach you. Very good. So I think we have one uh, room now. Uh, twelve, number twelve, Lars. Would you like to present it? Yeah, I think there are many rooms touching this subject, but. Uh, as I'm uh, within a number of different subjects forming uh, the power of forestry, I think understanding the possibilities of efficient precision forestry for sustainable solutions on different societal needs is a, uh, is a high level uh, question maybe, but you are free to discuss what you think is important in that subject. Um, okay, thank you very much. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna change your room to, to room number four. Is that okay? It's okay. So I'm just uh, gonna uh, drag it here like this. It's easier for the participants. So now I would like, uh, since we have already 11 rooms, uh, we are around 100 people. I think it's probably quite enough. Remember that you can still meet with individual people in the free rooms. Um, now, what I would like to ask you is everybody to follow the link of the Padlet agenda, this one of the open space, and to write your name in the comment in the one meeting that you want to go. Okay? Can everybody do this? Uh, well, hey, well, one, one question, if I, if I may, sorry. Um, Almudena speaking. Uh, uh, that's a question to Lars. Um, how do you see the the the, uh, the possible synergies in room one? Because possibly precision forestry is among those technological innovations that will be tackled in the in the first room. Do you agree? I agree to to a certain extent. Uh, I'm quite convinced you're right. <laughs> and then when we go to, for example, LCA, which I'm dealing with, it's maybe a little bit different subject, more analysis than technology mm -hmm. maybe, but, but it's based on the same ideas, yes. Okay, so I would suggest first seeing how many people want to go to each room 
because if there are too many people, then we keep the room separate because in the end, all topics are connected. Uh, but we still decide this after we see the comments uh, of how many people want to go, okay? Well, before I give the word to Stefania, I ask you all then to follow the link to this, uh, to this um, place that we're watching now, uh, that I'm sharing. You all please follow the link and write your name in a comment, choosing the meeting that you want to go to, okay? Please do this now so that we have an overview of how many people want to go to each room. So Stefania. Yes, uh, thank you. Just a question. If there are uh, more than one uh, workshop that I would like to follow or group as a butterfly, what I do? I choose one for now and then I will move or what? Yes, yes. Just put one now and then when you feel it's the right time, you can move. Okay. So everybody, now we have a couple of minutes to do this. Um, while everybody is writing their names. Um, does anybody want to ask anything, comment anything, share anything while we're waiting? Just a quick one. I put down room eight, you know, as a biochar production from Woodland to offset. Do I need to put my name against that? Sorry, I didn't understand your question. <clears throat> Sorry, the question is, is that I put down biochar production from woodland to offset carbon. That I want to what know room? About it. Number I, eight. I, I, don't have, I don't have to put my name against that, do I? No, 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 you don't. You don't. Okay, so because I've now, now in that group, um, can I put my name against any other group? Well, you could, but uh, you you cannot be in two places at the same time. So yeah, okay, no problems. Thank you. Yeah. So it's already becoming populated the the agenda for the meetings. If um, there's nobody going to one meeting, it's okay. What uh, I would suggest you to do is you open the room, you go to your meeting. Uh, you just meet with yourself, you take some time, you make some reflections, take some notes on the topic that you would like to discuss. Stay there for a little time. And then if nobody goes there, then you can go to another meeting. Uh, and that's it, you just took your time to reflect. Normally in an open space, uh, there is a report that we can uh, report in the end. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of this session today is not so much to report, but we will indeed give a little bit of time in the end to hear some main highlights of the discussions that happened just uh, for the interest of others, okay? So <clears throat> I think uh, we're- um, Andre, Andre, may I ask one thing? Yes. Uh, I see the main room, I don't know why. I didn't put it there. Sorry, I'm, I'm quite distributed sure. <laughs> in several rooms and I really don't know why. I didn't understand your question. Uh, why my name is in several rooms, I didn't put it there. I'm quite uh, uh, registered in, <laughs> in some rooms, but I really didn't do that. I just registered mm -hmm. in one of them. <laughs> okay, which room did you register to? Uh, yeah, I registered in the one room uh, six from the Benjamin Chaplin. Uh, okay. And the, well, <clears throat> I don't see your your name in many other rooms, so maybe it's just a problem from your screen. Okay, so okay. don't worry okay. about it. Okay. 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 Sorry so, for jumping in. Uh, I think that it's not um, that uh, she is uh, in many rooms, but it's. Uh, it's a new space to, to add her name if he wants to. I see also myself in many rooms, but I'm not real me. It's just uh, an empty space to, uh, to insert my name if I want. Exactly. Okay, thank you. So now before we begin, uh, we are almost uh, on the moment. We give a little bit more time for people to write their names. I would like to ask um, our host to share uh, the slides where we explain the participants how to move in between rooms. So 
for those of you that um, are already looking here at the slide, basically what's going to happen is that uh, the rooms are already created now. So we have these 20 rooms. As you've seen, only 11 of them, 11 of them are <clears throat> used for group rooms. The others are empty. The 20th room is used for the coffee break. So if you want, you don't know where to go or you want to make a break, you can go to the coffee hall instead of being in plenary. And maybe you meet some people in there that are also without uh, nothing to do. And actually sometimes this is where the best conversations start. So don't be shy to go to the coffee hall. Um, basically, uh, you can also invite other people in the Zoom so you can, in the participants list, you can private message somebody and invite them to go to one of the free rooms, okay? And how do you go to the rooms? So basically <clears throat> below on your Zoom window, you have these different signs, mute, stop, video, participants, chat, share screen, record, breakout rooms. Uh, it may appear in your own language, but basically you click in that button and this different list of rooms appear. And basically when we start, which will be in a, about a couple of, or three or four minutes, when we start, you just go there and choose which room you want to go, okay? If you do not see this breakout room symbol, it's because um, you have probably a, a smaller screen and there is a different, um, different um, signs of the Zoom that are condensed in, in, in one place that says more and you have three little dots. And this, in, this, in these three little dots, if you click there, you have uh, other things. And one of them will say simultaneous rooms, okay? So basically this is it. You choose which room to go to. When you are in one of these rooms, um, you can go to another room by pressing there and choosing another room to go. If you have any questions, you can come to plenary. When you want to go out from a room into plenary, you can choose leave room or you can choose leave meeting. Now you should choose only leave room because if you choose leave meeting, you will close the whole uh, Zoom meeting and you'll have to re-enter again, okay? So I hope this is clear. Before we begin, uh, does anybody have any question? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Rodina speaking, if I may. Uh, um, I, I don't have uh, that uh, that option. I mean, the uh, dot 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 with other options. So maybe <clears throat> maybe you didn't have it a while ago because the rooms were not open. Now the rooms are open, so you should be able to have it now. So in the uh, Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's so, it. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, before we begin, uh, we are looking now at the agenda again. So in room number one, we have about five people. Room number two and three and four, not yet uh, many people, but maybe they will appear later. Room number five, two people. Room number six, 14 people. Room number seven, around 10 people. Room number eight, three, and then two, and then something like nine or 10, and then one. Is there any uh, comment to the agenda? Does anybody still want to propose any more room? Is everything okay? Can we start? Okay. So um, basically we are going to start. I invite the EIP facilitators to maybe join room number one, six and seven, the ones that have a lot of people in case it's needed. Otherwise, Remember, the person that hosted the room and that proposes the meeting is the person that is the host and the facilitator, and you should stimulate a nice discussion. You don't have any report obligatory, but in the end, we will ask you for some uh, short comments to the whole group, just for interest of everybody. And the idea is that we have one hour for discussion and that we come back here um, in one hour. So at uh, four, 35. Okay, is this okay? Andre, could you maybe just re explain what the people who are in a room that are alone, like room two, three, four, what, they, what uh, we would expect from them? So basically, uh, you can go to your room. 
that you're alone there. You can reflect a little bit, maybe take notes, think a little bit about the topic you proposed. Think, uh, yeah, go as deep as you want. Take that time. During that time, maybe somebody will appear. And if nobody appears, then you are free to go to another room, okay? So we hope you take the best out of this session. Today is really for you. And, uh, and then we see each other again. And we'll be all here together until 4.30 and uh, where we come back to plenary. Okay? Is this clear? So we wish you a great meetings. Do exactly what you want because this is only for you. Okay? Have a great meeting. If you have any question, uh, I'm here and we'll be here. If you have any, any technical support needs or anything. So now you are free to go to your meetings. Maybe just to tell to those that see the long. Thanks. And then one of them is against of getting a timber out from forest. He want to let everything as it is for a while. And then a hot summer day, somebody is smoking a cigarette and the poof, it burns up, but the little part remains. Continue as a pop up as we were doing before. Continue. Of Anybody course, can... eucalyptus will be sprout after the fire. And, oh, yes, but anyway, the whole the people from the region became very concerned and enthusiastic in re foresting a very colorful green forest. So they asked for help for a very innovative group of uh, consultants. And then uh, deers and elks come and the sinning of the site. And then they start fighting with the hunting people. Which is dangerous because ah. they have guns. <laughs> okay, thank you all but very much. There is EIP helping with the new projects to find solutions. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a round table bringing all stakeholders together, <laughs> making them talk to each other. <laughs> And because of the, all the forest burned down, they didn't have a table because there was no wood left to build a table. So they just stood in a circle. And as they were standing in the circle, they remembered how they used to dance in former times. And they started the big dance all together. OK, Sounds for those good. of you that are just, uh, just arrived, we started telling a story. We started from a very degraded eucalyptus forest and we were each of us building a little bit on how we could innovate it and continue. And actually it feels like we were willing to continue this exercise, no? So maybe if we, if we, after listening to the groups, if we have enough time, we can continue and start again or do it another time. So thank you all very much uh, for participating, for being in the groups. So I hope you had interesting conversations that you were in the right place. So now what we would like to basically do is have a little bit of time to get to know what happened in the different groups. Those of you that want to share something, um, this is the opportunity. So I'm going to give the floor to room number one. I'm going to share my screen um, just a little bit so that we remember uh, what was in each room. So I'm just going to share my screen. So room number one, Almudena, you proposed a meeting on the challenges for technological innovation adopted by forest stakeholders. And it got together with the meeting proposed by David on the digitalization uh, and lagging actors in the forestry value chain. So do you want to share a little bit of what happened in your group? 
Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, we have nominated uh, Willemin as, uh, uh, I mean, our facilitator uh, as a rapporteur. So I will pass the floor to to her if uh, okay. she's too kind yes, to yeah. to make yeah. the summary. Yeah, uh, Amudena, if I forget anything important, you just add it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you so much. I yeah. appreciate it. Well, we had a very rich discussion, and uh, everyone sort of introduced their their asp their background on forest data and how they were working on it, and the questions. and the, There were was a lot of discussion on uh, what the barriers were, and we ended with the recommendations and conclusions. So I think I will start with that. I think that's that's really of interest to the group. Um, so there was a, a point on satellite information. When this is used, it's very important to do ground truthing. And Anton shared a, um, an ongoing initiative on combining satellite data with a smartphone measurement across the globe for better uh, forest data. Because everyone agreed that you do need uh, timely, uh, appropriate data for them to be useful for forest management. Lars uh, stressed the need for high precision data to really know what's happening in the forest and um, also for uh, payment for ecosystem services that forests are also providing for forest owners to be able to do proper management. Uh, David stressed the, the need to be in touch with the forest owners to understand the real problems on the field and in the forest and also a willingness on the part of companies that are involved to be transparent and the belief that these digital tools can really improve. Ignacy, from the point of view of Forest Owners Association said, we really need to find the proper tools for the different needs we have. And we're, we're struggling to find these and we need to have these combined with proper learning. So training on how to use these tools at an affordable price. The latter is also extremely important. So um, yeah, I think these are really uh, very uh, pertinent results from this group. Almudena, uh, should we add anything here? Just a, a small comment. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a harvest data standardized, it's a very good ground truth. When you harvest, you really <laughs> see what you get, the type precision. Um, yeah. Yes, we, we did talk a lot about also machine data and the ownership of da these data, that this is not very clear usually. So, and that it's important to know and how to sort of exchange these data and bring them together in these tools that Ignacy is uh, talking about as well. Thank you very Thank much. You. Villamin for this uh, synthesis. So maybe we hear from uh, the room number two, which I think we probably Siaran was alone. I'm not sure, Siaran or Karen, do you want to make a synthesis of what uh, happened in your room? Did you have people? Did you reflect a little bit more? Do you want to share anything from the group with the group? Are you there, Karen? Maybe he left. So I, I, ah, you are. So go ahead. I had a. You're having some technical difficulties. I see. Maybe turn off your video and speak without the video. Maybe it's better. Karen, may you speak without the video? Can do you want to speak? Share something. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you and uh, give you the opportunity to speak in a while. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to turn off your video, and you try to speak in a little while. Okay. Um, can uh, room number three? Speak, Eugenia. Yes. Um, so the um, topic of our room was the use of coniferous wood greenery. So we have um, <laughs> we had one participant from Finland. Uh, so the 
the aim of the discussion was to use uh, coniferous pine needle extract producing a natural uh, product for treatment for gastrointestinal diseases or immune system. So green products from uh, forests. Uh, and um, the main conclusions that we can reach the new business models, uh, cooperation with Baltic countries and Northern Europe. Um, we can uh, obtain a new product from forests, promoting new, for, uh, new products, and uh, as well as green uh, to invent other green products from forest. Uh, especially, um, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Risto Laukanen for the discussion. Please. Uh, so, and uh, we were glad to be here and to participate in this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your summary. Uh, maybe now we can listen, uh, Lars, uh, you had a discussion on understanding the possibilities of efficient precision forestry sustainable solutions on different societal needs. Lars, do you want to make a, a short summary of what happened? Yeah, that's, that summary has already occurred because I joined room number one as ah. was recommended by Almadena. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I'm happy for that. So you can move it in that okay. Okay. position Thank instead. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <coughs> room number five, Anton, democratization of forestry sector. Are you available to give us a summary? Yeah. Um, well, to start with, precision forestry is a term that is 300 years old. It was defined in Germany 300 years ago, uh, and it's been not used the like, latest 100 years, maybe. Uh, we see, we discussed some about that. Uh, the problem with, with data from the forest today is combined that you need to cut down the trees. Um, and most many forest owners don't want to cut the trees to be able to measure them and know what they actually have. Um, and well, I think we concluded three persons want to try out our technology to see how, if it works. I think that was the conclusions from, from the meeting, uh, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. So good luck with that. Let's hear from room number six, Benjamin, on the IP thematic network of operational groups about forest issues. Yes. So in, in this room, we, we share a common interest about the current topic uh, within the Horizon Europe, uh, which is the creation of a thematic network of operational groups. And uh, we, we thought that it would be a good opportunity for us to create so, uh, a thematic network on the forest uh, related issues. Uh, we start with the, the, um, the situation, the following situ situation, which is there's, uh, there are many operational groups and uh, a lot of them are uh, in France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. Um, they're very various on different topics uh, like uh, in agriculture, forestry, uh, silver pastoralism, and uh, they are very di diverse. Um, so the the first challenge for us was to to focus on on one specific topic. But in the end, we we said that it's uh, maybe interesting to to stay maybe uh, large uh, and uh, and try to 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 join this this different topic and um, and uh, and answer different challenges. But we also say that uh, it's important to to not focus on only this this region uh, the southwest of uh, europe and maybe to to stay to be more cross uh, regional uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, what we what we said uh, so we need to still to discuss about it so that's why i i gathered all the the contacts of uh, the different participants and uh, the last thing is um, uh, Yes, uh, we we discuss the the, the, the need to, to find um, a leader uh, who is able to uh, to coordinate and also to communicate uh, uh, about this uh, this project. So um, so this this is another challenge, and we say that also it's not uh, do you say um, a requirement to be 
um, a leader of, of operational groups, but um, if we, if any partners has uh, has a, a capacity or a competence, uh, a skill to, to share in this consortium, it would be uh, welcome. So for the coordination or for the communication, we we still have to discuss about it. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. So let's hear from um, room number eight. Adrian, did you have a discussion? How did it go? The topic was biochar production from woodland to offset carbon. Yeah. So yeah, in our group, um, we'll get. Um, I think um, the best the best thing to do would be get Risto to to do the presentation. But just to start off with. Um, uh, in in the little in the small group we had it was Risto myself and Sven from Spain in Madrid uh, Risto from Finland um, it was all to do with um, biochar uh, some of the things I got out of it was uh, high quality biochar into dairy feed and uh, reduce the carbon carbon output from from uh, da da dairy stock but equally um, putting the carbon back into the soil will increase the the car you know increase the water capacities in the soil. But I'll hand over to Risto now. Um, we'll, we'll just um, finalise in some of the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It's uh, an interesting topic as well. So we skipped number seven, but since we also already skipped room number two from uh, Kiaran or Ciaran, I don't know how to pronounce, that had technical issues, we come back to room number two. Ciaran, do you want, or Kiaran, do you want to try? and speak without the video if uh, you want to share. Let's try again. Are you there? Well, maybe not. So let's hear then from room number seven, Carol, sorry, uh, on trade-offs and priorities of providing forest ecosystem services. Yes, Carol. thank you very much. Yes, that was our group. And uh, not surprisingly, we found out that uh, even to discuss the topic, it was difficult to sort out the terminology. Terminology of forest ecosystem services and the provision of forest ecosystem services changes over time. It's quite complex, even within the scientific community. And it's probably too complex for laymen, for smallholder forest owners, or even people who are not involved in forestry. Uh, so that was one important point uh, to straighten out. And the recommendation is any one group that is trying to change something or make decisions for forest management should as a group come up with a common terminology. What do we think and what do we understand if we say a certain word? And that may be old or new terminology, but you have to have a consensus on it. Um, second uh, was raised before, um, aren't we talking about sustainable forest management, uh, multifunctionality of forestry, which is probably already addressed by certification. Um, we had a very interesting contribution that is, it's undisputedly assumed that forests provide all these different forest ecosystem services, and there was some surprise that there might be some trade-offs. So again, if we are talking in a group, if we want to change things, this has to be made aware. And it's not one or the other, but if it's one more, it may be one less. And that gets us to the financial goals. <clears throat> uh, especially within Inner Forest, uh, we found out that there may be three different levels of uh, financial interests in forest management, depending on the type of ownership. It may be increase a high income uh, with climate change at an ever higher risk. It may be a more risk, risk less income by diversification towards other forest services and provision and marketing of forest ecosystem services. Or it may even be cost neutral to enhance resilience, to enhance multifunctionality, and at least make enough money by timber production to be able to provide this management. And to reach this goal, we uh, discussed uh, EU intervention by please common be, regulations. Be short, okay, Carol. Yeah, common regulations, public financial support, uh, which is not applicable to all participating countries here. For example, the UK. 
And so the solution or the, the uh, consensus is there's no one solution for all, but any group participatory process that is dealing with this issue should be clear on the terminology, should be rather diversified stakeholder group to include people from inside and outside the, um, the sector and to develop common visions to then be able to work in that direction. Thank you. Okay, amazing, great discussions. Insightful conclusions. Thank you so much for the great summary. So uh, we still have three meetings to go. So room number nine, FLIP. Uh, it was about large scale soil build up through best practices in forest management. Flip, do you want to share what was the discussion about? Yeah. Um, uh, mainly we, we discussed some, some practices uh, that can enhance uh, soil formation and the scalability of those practices. Um, and we diverged uh, a little bit in, in the direction of uh, reforestation and also best practices in, in reforestation. Um, well, in terms of conclusions, uh, we can, uh, basically we, we agreed that we should avoid uh, plowing and we should enhance soil covered, cover and, um, uh, and avoid also uh, exporting biomass as long as uh, as it's feasible or as it's possible so in terms uh, another interesting idea um was the um, interplanting of um with deciduous trees so again in to improve um, biomass deposition in uh, in soil surface so basically in really simple terms is that Thank you so much. Amazing, super conclusions. Very insightful as well. Thank you so much, Flip. Nice to see you again. So room number 10, Linda, uh, it was about practical examples of alternative forest uses for schools, edible forest outreach, seminars, etc. Linda, do you want to give us a summary on what your discussion has produced? Sure. Um, a quick overview of what um, examples we actually had in the group was um, we had beekeepers, we had someone who was using forest as like a windbreaker for orchards. Um, we had some agroforest, like forest tourism and like forest bathing examples. And there's also um, a project about CO2 sequestration, how you can measure the CO2 sequestration also as an additional kind of source of income. Um, we had some comments about uh, interesting comments about how important visualization is when you when you invite the general public into your forest. So like really nice um, uh, like overview of what the forest will look like, where they're going to go, what they're going to be doing. Um, and uh, one of the uh, points where we found that it might be difficult to combine combine other uses and and timber harvest is like when recreational use. And and the harvesting don't don't like in in time and in and in philosophy kind of don't go together. So and that led us to the next point where often the people that that say come to forest bathe are not the people that approve of other uses like the, the traditional uses of the forest, so timber harvesting. And that came the kind of the final discussion was about how actually outreach is another very important thing that should be done in the forest. So teach the, the general public why timber has to be harvested and why um, work in the forest leads to make the forest stronger and, and better for the future. But very interesting discussion. Great, great, great. Very inspiring, thank you so much. So we are almost finishing our seminar. Let's listen from the last uh, meeting room, um, Gunilla, on plant breeding and seedling production. What were your reflections? Thank you. We ended up with a wider discussion and comparison between Bulgaria, uh, Holland and Finland. But we anyway came back to breeding and, and seedling production and uh, diverse conditions and climate change is affecting and we're getting some plant diseases that may or may not be in correlation to climate change. That was, that was one issue. And um, then about the issue about using native species or exotics and whether to introduce some more drought resistance and uh, uh, 
Bulgaria is huge, uh, a warmer climate, and uh, compared to smaller amounts of species available. So it was more or less of a technical, technical discussion, but uh, like uh, forest is managed for water in, in Bulgaria and in Finland, it's more or less wood production is back, backbone of our country, a multi, multiple use. And towards the end, well, after the pandemic, I may go to Bulgaria and I hope to get visitors from Holland and from Bulgaria. That was it. Okay, thank you very much, Gunilla. So I would like to ask you all to put into gallery view uh, so that we all see each other. We're getting into the final moments of the day. So I would like to ask you uh, again to turn on your video uh, to make a very short evaluation. So we had uh, interesting, apparently interesting discussions. So I'd like to ask to you, how interesting were these discussions to you during the day? So from zero to 10, I would like you to show your hands. If you found these discussions interesting, relevant, you, you, you got something from today. Uh, if you got a lot, you, make a you give us a 10. If you got more or less, you give a five or a seven or and if it was really, you got nothing from today, you give us a zero. So how interesting were the discussions today? Can you show us your hands so that we can see? Please, in the video. Now. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we had, uh, some people had some technical issues, some people not. So how was it for you? If everything went really smoothly for, uh, for you in technical aspects, give us a 10. If it was really, well, if you're not here, you probably give us a zero because you couldn't be here. But if it was really hard, you give one or two because it was really hard for you to, to work today. So give us your show of hands on how was it technically uh, the day for you. Can you show us your hands? So for some people it was easy, some people it was hard. Let us see. Okay. Thank you very much. We're now seeing the <laughs> there's one person with a one. So for some of you it was really hard. So in terms of um, methods and process, did you find this appealing, stimulating, interesting, relevant, these different methods that we had throughout the day and adequate? Or you found this uh, boring, not adequate, uh, well, thought you, sh you think it, everything should have been completely different. So if you really liked, again, give us a 10, if more or less five. If you really hated it, give us a zero. So can you show your hands? Uh, on the process, methods, and so on. So thank you all very much. So it's five o'clock. Uh, it has been a pleasure for me to be the host uh, uh, facilitator to guide you through the day, help you out in the discussions. I'm a bit uh, pitiful that I wasn't taking part as you in the discussions itself. But, uh, well, this is not for me, it's for you. And it's also for the, the EIP Agri and for all the institutions that are here today that will also harvest. But we really hope that it was relevant for you. And tomorrow we will continue the content discussions that will also be relevant to you and for all the institutions here present that will then harvest, report and reflect on what was brought by you and together built. So thank you very much uh, for your presence. Tomorrow we'd like to ask you to be at uh, some minutes before, so normally half an hour before, but at least five, 10 minutes before. So we really start at nine o'clock Central European time. And that's it. Thank you very much. And I ask you now to voice and mute yourselves and you can say freely goodbye and uh, have a nice time until tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 B